Oh, hey everybody, welcome back. Um, I was just looking through this IFR low altitude en route chart and I found this feathered arrow symbol. Now, I know that this is the localizer course symbol on an instrument approach chart, but what the heck does it mean here? Why is it on an en route chart? Well, anyway, maybe we'll get to that as we discuss the IFR low altitude en route chart legend. That's right. Welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy and yours truly, Mike Thompson. Now, as I recall, there are three things to help you be successful in this course. What are they again? Yes, number one, you are enrolled in Epic's online instrument rating course. Number two, Two, watching these videos. Awesome. Click that subscribe button. And number three, of course, you are going to want to be working with your instrument flight instructor. So, that low altitude and route chart. Now, these low altitude and route charts come in two flavors strawberry and, of course, key lime. Ah, uh, no. The flavors are low and high. The low altitude chart goes from the surface to 17,999 MSL, and the high altitude chart starts at 18,000 feet and goes up from there. Now, these charts are published every 56 days, and they show details of the national airspace system, including airspace, airways, nav aids, airports, and other relevant information. Now, as you've heard me say, the use of the table of contents will help you make sense of and understand the FARs, manuals, books, etc. In the same way, the use of map legends will help you make sense of maps and charts. Now, using this legend, let's review a few highlights. In this slide, we're pointing out that airports shown in blue and green have instrument approach procedures and or radar minima. Airports shown in brown have no instrument approach procedure or radar minima. So why are they there? They are shown because they have a hard surface runway of at least 3,000 feet. Airport data, shown in this slide, is very similar to what you have seen on sectional charts, with only some minor differences. One difference is the C or D following the airport identifier to denote class C or D airspace. Also, you might see M-O-N over the airport name. I wonder what that means. Uh, the airport is closed on Mondays. Mm, no. What it means is that this airport is part of the Minimum Operational Network, or MON. So, review that with your CFII. Now, take a look at this slide showing the compass rows around Ocala International Airport. Here you can see a vortex co-located with the airport, and let's find out what that north pointing arrow means. Let me see. If I look at this legend, ha, there it is, right there. And what it says is, the compass rows and or north arrow are oriented to magnetic north of the nav aid. Hmm, good to know. Now, <clears throat> take a look at this slide, and let's see how Bravo and Charlie airspace are depicted. 
Bravo is shown as a screened blue area with a solid line encompassing the area. Charlie is also shown as a screened blue area, but with a dashed line encompassing the area and the letter C following the airport name. Delta airspace is depicted as an open area, white, with the letter D following the airport name. Special use airspace is also shown, and it looks very much the same as it did on your sectional chart. Now, refer to the AIM Section 3 for airspace and review this with your flight instructor. Notice if you're using a paper chart, that special use airspace is also listed in the margin. Next, let's have a look at the radio aids to navigation. Now, these we have covered before in our private pilot course, and they are depicted basically the same here. Except, as you can see here in this slide, they're listed twice. The second row is blacked in. Hmm, why is that? If the nav aid is blacked in, that means it is a compulsory reporting point. If you are using that aid as part of your en route structure for your cross country navigation. And hey, there's that feathered arrow from the ILS localizer. What's that doing here? Oh, hey. Oh, take a look. The ILS localizer course is depicted on the low in route chart when it has an additional navigational function, such as identifying a fix, or in this case, Libby on Victor 198. I'll tell you, using these legends can be a huge value. I love these legends. There is a ton of information here. Well, folks, join us next time as we explore the low altitude and route chart in more detail.